At this time, I'd like to introduce a true gentleman here in the state of Tennessee. Colonel Trott has served as a member of the THP since 1978. His experience includes seven years as a road trooper in Greene and Carter counties, six years as a Greene and Sullivan County enforcement sergeant, and 14 years as a troop lieutenant, where he managed five counties in the Tri-Cities area and performed day-to-day -day law enforcement duties. Trot served a five-month stint as a major in the colonel's office before being promoted to lieutenant colonel in August of 2006. Leading the list of his accomplishments include a two-time honor as one of the top 10 troopers in DUI enforcement in Tennessee, a certification as a police instructor by the Post Commission, a graduate of the Tennessee Government Executive Institute, and selection to the Tennessee Law Enforcement Executive De Development FBI program. Colonel Trott served as the Southern Region Chair for the IACP Division and State of Provincial Police until being elected in the position of Second Vice Chair for the division in 2012. A native of Randolph, Maine, Trott earned an associate's degree in law enforcement, a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, and a master's degree in criminology from ETSU. He also is a 1996 graduate of the Northwestern School of Police Staff and Command. He began his law enforcement career as a police officer with the ETSU Police Department in 1976. Colonel Trott has worked diligently to accomplish the five primary goals he set forth for the 2013-2014 year. Colonel Trott is married to Meredith Treadway Trott and has two grown children, Laura and Joey. He resides in Rutherford County. Please help me welcome, again, a true gentleman, Colonel Tracy Trott. Good evening. I want to welcome everybody here tonight to the third annual Trooper and Dispatcher of the Year Banquet. The year 2013 was very rewarding getting to witness some of the great works and accomplishments that we celebrate here tonight. When you read the stories and the dedication to saving lives and the heroic acts that we'll celebrate tonight, it helps you filter out really what is important and what is not. Tonight is for the award winners who sacrifice and work so hard to achieve our goals. When the commissioners and I came into office three and a half years ago, we settled on a strategy to make Tennessee a safer place to live, work, and drive. Our number one priority was impaired driving enforcement, which we've increased 92% in three years. Here in the first two months of 2014, we've seen another 42% increase in our DUI arrest, which has driven our alcohol-related fatalities down to a mere 16%, way below the national average. A close second was our effort to enforce the seatbelt and CRD statutes. That enforcement has increased 135% in two years and lowered the unrestrained fatality rate by 4%. Enforcement for the first two months of 2014 has again increased 84%. Our third priority was hazardous moving violations, the violations that actually kill people. Those violations have increased 22%. Along with that, we vowed to be stronger in our interdiction efforts and vastly improve our investigative function. All those priorities are being achieved every day, and it's those accomplishments that we'll celebrate tonight. We've reduced overall fatalities, especially those caused by impaired drivers, and Tennessee is a much safer place today because of your efforts. We all need support to do our job, and I want to thank Commissioner Givens and Commissioner Godwin for their support of the THP and their willingness to recognize the excellence of a great organization. I also want to thank Megan Buell for our, being our MC again from the Governor's Highway Safety Office for the second year in a row. I need to express a great deal of thanks to April and Jessica from my office who have worked so hard on this event. I also want to thank the Public Information Office, Jennifer Donalds, Mark Bork, Dahlia Qualls, and Sergeant Bill Miller. A big event like tonight does just not happen. It takes a lot of work, and this is the culmination of weeks of work 
and attention to detail. So I want to say thank you to everybody that helped in that effort. Representing the THP as a colonel is a lifelong dream. One of the great privileges is to represent the command staff and our district captains and unit captains. I want to thank all of them for their leadership and hard work. I especially want to recognize my two lieutenant colonels who I could not do without. Lieutenant Colonel Dean Hurley, Lieutenant Colonel Derek Stewart are great friends great workers, and both of them could take over this organization tomorrow and do just as well, if not better, than I do. So I want to say thank you to them and tell all the command staff that it takes all of us to make this thing work. Now on to tonight's activities. I cannot tell you how proud I am of the achievement and hard work represented here tonight. Working together, trooper, dispatcher, investigator, supervisors, and leadership, we experienced the third safest year for fatal crashes in the last 50 years. Troopers overexceeded our expectations in all enforcement and investigative functions. Our enforcement efforts, along with our safety and educational campaigns, definitely saved lives and prevented injuries. We had great successes in many areas, from interdiction to reducing crashes to assisting local law enforcement to reestablishing the Tennessee Highway Patrol as the finest law enforcement agency in this state and the finest in the nation. As we recognize the great many works of the Tennessee Highway Patrol, I want to give you my sincere thanks for your dedication to duty. We all made a pledge at one time or another to make Tennessee a safer place. You delivered on that pledge. This evening is for you and as Commissioner Gibbons always says, you are Tennessee's finest. We have a number of special guests, very special people here tonight, and I want to take just a few minutes to recognize them, and if they would stand up when I call your name. Our Assistant Commissioner for Homeland Security, is David Perkey. He's a former trooper and a TBI agent, a former county mayor, and he's the director of the Homeland Security Division and the interim director of TEMA beginning in April. David, thank you for being here. <laughs> Assistant Commissioner Lori Bullard oversees our Driver Services Division, a retired precinct commander from the Memphis PD with over 25 years of law enforcement. Lori does a great job and is improving our wait times every day in the DL centers. Thank you, Lori. I want to recognize, I think, five of my command staff that has retired over the last few years. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Danny Wilson. Retired Lieutenant Colonel J.R. Perry. Retired Major Phil Harden. Retired Major Rex Prince. And retired Lieutenant Colonel Albert Strother. These guys taught me everything I know. Thank you. From Washington, D.C., the director of the IACP State and Provincial Section, and if you remember last year, our keynote speaker, Dr. Mike Wagers. <laughs> Retired Chief of Police from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, Peter Korn, who is the head of the State Association of Chiefs of Police Organization. <laughs> Chief Gil Kendrick of Jackson PD, who is the incoming president of the uh, Safe Cop organization. <laughs> One of our great partners, Kendall Poole of the Governor's Highway Safety Office. <laughs> Maggie Duncan, the Tennessee Director of the uh, State Chiefs of Police Association. Thank you, Maggie. <laughs> Chris Mike Edmondson, you'll get to hear a lot from him later, the Colonel of the L Louisiana State Police. Ronnie Jones, the retired Lieutenant Colonel from the State Police and the Confidential Executive Assistant for Colonel Edmondson. <laughs> and Dave Mitchell, a former FBI SAC and former Commissioner of Safety, who I love every day because he promoted me to Colonel. <laughs> <laughs>
retired Colonel Charlie Danner, who was Colonel for eight years back in the 60s and 70s. Charlie. <laughs> Former trooper Charlie Gaddis, one of the strongest supporters of the THP and founder of the Road Law Gang. Last year's Trooper of the Year, Trooper Nathan Hall from Kingsport, Tennessee. And there are several members of the foundation, the, tenant, the Department of Safety and Homeland Security Foundation here that Commissioner Gibbons will introduce in just a minute, but I want to mention one of them who is dear to my heart, Commissioner Gerald Nicely, who promoted me to major and gave me a chance. <laughs> Now, I would like for both of the commissioners to get a chance to talk to you tonight and say a few words. But first, let me tell you what a great honor it is to work for these two gentlemen. They bring a new level of integrity and professionalism to our department. They don't prescribe to the notion that that's the way we've always done things. And what I like best is they have high expectations of me and the organization, and they want to win. They want us to be the best of the best and they give me and the command staff the freedom to run our organization in a positive and professional way. Our deputy commissioner is a former police director in Memphis and served there for 38 years. He was a highly decorated and progressive police chief. He brings an incredible energy and professionalism to our department. Please welcome the deputy commissioner, Deputy Commissioner Larry Godwin. First of all, uh, Colonel, thank you very much, and um, it, it's truly an honor and a privilege for me to be here. I, um, I don't really, I didn't come up here prepared to say a whole lot because I really believe this is your night, and many, many times, um, as you well know, we're not, as law enforcement officers, you're not recognized for all the good things that you do each and every single day. We, we have to spoon feed uh, certain outlets sometime to get our message out, which is okay, and, and we don't mind doing that because then we get to kind of write it the way we want it and the way it should be. But the other side of that coin is they're eager to do things that uh, we wish they would talk to us first so that we could maybe, you know, uh, write that the right way. But that's okay, and uh, we're, we're, we're big boys and girls, so we're used to that. But uh, with that being said, what is important is that we recognize it's okay to get a pat on the back from the, from the community, and it's good to hear those things. But your, your leaders, your executive staff, should surely recognize the hard work that you do. I surely do. I see you on the road every single day. I've always had the utmost respect for any organization that wears a badge. But I'll tell you this, I have a whole different level because I never knew what you did. And I say this many, many times, I never knew the so many things that you did. I mean, I knew you worked hard on the interstate, but the first time I came up here and um, saw a graduation, I was like, where'd they get these helicopters? I mean, we didn't even have a Huey anymore, you know? I sold it, got talked into selling it. Now New York's flying it around, you know? And I'm going, good grief, bomb tanks. Oh, I, I wanted one of those so bad, we ended up getting something else. So I'm really proud to be associated with such an outstanding organization. And um, I, I guess you may have heard me say this many times. I'm, it's a fourth quarter for me, so uh, I'm, I'm having fun. And the commissioner knows that. I'm, I'm just trying to make a difference. I tell the colonel, every, just what can I do to kind of, you know, I kind of get excited about some things. But at the end of the day, we want to save lives, as the colonel said. We want the community to say, whoa, there goes Tennessee's finest. And I think we, we're there, but we, we want more, and there's a lot more to do um, before the clock ticks uh, at the end of the quarter. But the bottom line is I want to thank the families. I want to thank you for being here tonight. I want to thank the friends and the recipients because this is truly, truly an honor to be here. It's an honor to see you get the things that you deserve, and that's recognition. And uh, we, we collect these things throughout our career. But let me tell you, you got a long career ahead of you and an opportunity to really save a lot of lives, to make a big difference in the state of Tennessee. And as I tell everybody this, and I get a chuckle out of it, but you think I'm kidding, I'm not. My daughter travels from Knoxville to Memphis to get her hair cut. Really troubles me. 
hopefully when she gets married, it's just, just traveling to stop. But then she says, well, I don't know, Dad. You know, I don't trust no one cutting my hair. Surely there is somebody in Knoxville that can cut my daughter's hair. So I say that because I want to thank the troopers on the interstate. It makes me feel pretty darn good that I know that if my daughter needs something or my son needs something, you do not hesitate to go. And it's not because it's my family. You don't hesitate to go anyway. So congratulations to those tonight. And uh, thank you, Colonel, for allowing me to be a part of this program. And it, again, uh, what a great night. They don't get old. Thank you very much. Our commissioner is a man that has earned his respect in the law enforcement community with his work as a district attorney for Shelby County for 14 years before being appointed safety commissioner for the Department of Safety and Homeland Commissioner and Homeland Security. I have to say that I learn something from Commissioner Gibbons every time I'm around him. It might be just something very little, sometimes it's uh, something very big, but it's always an education. The Department of Safety and Homeland Security has never been in better hands. Please welcome Commissioner Bill Gibbons. Well, thank you very much, Colonel Trott, and thank all of you for being here on a very, very special evening. I'm being a little repetitive uh, from what some of the others said, but I am very proud of my association with our state troopers, and I do consider them to be Tennessee's finest. They make up the very best law enforcement agency in our state and one of the best law enforcement agencies in the entire nation. So I am very proud of that association. And as each day goes by during my service as Commissioner of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security, I grow in my recognition of the public service that our state troopers are giving, but also the sacrifices that they and their family members make every day. And I am very, very appreciative, not only as Commissioner, but simply as a citizen of the state for that service and for those sacrifices. And tonight, we're gonna to be recognizing some of the best of Tennessee's finest, as well as some of their coworkers. So it's a, it's a great evening, and again, thank all of you for being here. Now, last year, uh, with the approval of the General Assembly, we were able to put together a private foundation to support the Department of Safety and Homeland Security uh, our state troopers, as well as other parts of the department. Uh, and it's uh, a great uh, opportunity to develop a partnership between the department and the private sector. Uh, frankly, their job is to go out and try to raise some funds uh, to handle some things that we really can't handle through our normal budget. Uh, a great example this past year is $60,000 that the foundation provided uh, to help us purchase uh, outer bullet resistant vests for all of our road troopers. Uh, this is something we needed. We didn't quite have the money in the budget to cover it all. The foundation stepped forward and gave $60,000 to help us get that done. Uh, we do have with us uh, a number of members of the foundation board. I do want to recognize them. First of all, uh, the chairman of the board, Scott Neiswanger. Scott, would, would you stand? Uh, Scott. <laughs> Scott came all the way over from uh, Greene County to be with us tonight, and Scott, we appreciate your presence here uh, and your service as chairman of the board of directors. Uh, we have a number of other board members here as well. Um, first of all, the Reverend Fred Detweiler. Fred, if you would stand. We also have Mr. Mike Hottinger here. Mike, if you would stand. Mr. Joe Hicks, and I'm going to ask him to stand a second time, former Commissioner Gerald Nicely. Gerald. Uh, we also have hired an executive director for the foundation, Keith Perrigan. Uh, Keith retired from the Secret Service uh, and decided to become uh, executive director of our foundation. Uh, Keith, would you stand and be recognized? Thank all of you again for being here tonight. It's going to be a great uh, evening and an opportunity to recognize uh, in a little way those who are making those sacrifices on a day-to-day -day basis and are 
uh, among the best of Tennessee's finest. So thank you for being here. All right, Mark, do we have the message from the governor? We don't, okay. All right. Well, listen, we've got a lot to do tonight. We've got a lot of awards to give out, and uh, we want you to have a great meal. I want you to know Jessica has put in a lot of work working with the chefs and making sure you're going to be served with a great meal tonight. Uh, but first, I want to introduce uh, Lieutenant Colonel Albert Strother, who is going to give our blessing before we eat tonight. And I want you to enjoy your meal, and then we'll come back with the program. Colonel Strother. Let us bow. Father God, we bow before you this evening, first of all, to say thank you. We thank you for those who are being recognized for outstanding service. We thank you for watching over them as in the performance of their duty. We thank you, O Master, for being with them during the tour of duty, blessing their families and their loved ones, keeping them safe. And we thank you, O Master, for this department for keeping our roads and highways safe. We ask, O oh Master, that we look to you and allow us to have the integrity to do what we do for the goodness of the citizens of the state, knowing that you sit high and you look low, and you're God that answers our prayers, and you've kept our department and kept us safe and kept us strong. Continue to direct us and guide us now. Bless this food that's been prepared for us for the nourishment of our bodies, this we ask in your son Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. We are very fortunate tonight to have a special guest with us from Louisiana. Our keynote speaker is really a, a great law enforcement leader. Colonel Mike Edmondson is the 25th superintendent of the Louisiana State Police. He was appointed in 2008 by Governor Bobby Jindal. In addition to the state police, Mike is the Deputy Secretary of Public Safety Services and oversees the Louisiana Highway Safety Commission, the Office of Finance and Management, the Office of Motor Vehicles, the Fire Marshal's Office, Louisiana Oil Spill Coordinator's Office, and the Petroleum Gas Commission. Mike joined the state police in 1981 and progressed through the ranks. He's held some interesting positions. <laughs> they don't want to hear Yeah, all they do. They want to know all about you. No, they don't. Mike was the chief spokesman for the Louisiana State Police at one time. He directed the 800 megahertz radio system. He automated a new radio uh, automated fueling system for the fleet of 1,600 vehicles. He oversaw the building of a new training facility, 42 acres, $42 million and 1,500 acres. But Mike's most notable assignment, most notable, and we won't hold it against him, but he was head security for LSU football for 26 years. <laughs> He's been part of a couple national championship teams, and I want to tell you, his memorabilia collection is very, very impressive, with several national championship rings. My association with Mike began several years ago with the IACP, and Mike really had already established himself as a, a great leader in law enforcement. He uh, was elected general chairman of the S&P in 2012, and he really encouraged me and helped me be elected as southern region chair and then second vice chair in 2012. Thanks to Mike, the Tennessee Highway Patrol was recognized as a very proactive and professional organization ahead of its curve in, in most areas. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the Colonel of the Louisiana State Police, Mark Edmondson. If anybody sings Rocky Top, I'm leaving, so. <laughs> no, I, this hotel, when we, when we played uh, um, Vanderbilt, we actually stayed in this hotel. Um, look, I'm only gonna talk for about an hour and a half. 
So uh, three people went to the bathroom, so I'm going to wait till they get back. I want to make sure they hear this. First of all, this year's sin, where's, uh, where's Cheryl Sanders? Ben Briley is safe. Her son-in-law, Ben Briley, the top 12 in American Idol. What an honor. You know, I, I, I feel so comfortable being in Tennessee and, and such an honor to be here. I, uh, I thought I wanted to play professional baseball, and I played uh, quite a bit in Louisiana and thought I was pretty good until I came up here and played a couple of boys from Murfreesboro and a couple of areas outside of uh, uh, Memphis and Nashville, and uh, I never left Tennessee a, a winner. So uh, y'all got quite some baseball players here, and I, I really appreciated that. It, you know, I, what really... I'm, I guess I've been with State Police now about 10 on my 34th year, one year behind. Uh, your illustrious colonel here is a dear, dear friend of mine. And what I like so much about tonight is you're here to honor your finest. And what I like so much is that you add into your dispatch of the year. And I, and I say that because as a, as a young trooper, I remember rolling into an area where I was about a, less than 100 yards away from a, from a city police officer in Baton Rouge, uh, who on a traffic stop, shot, stop had been shot seven times. And as I rolled up, um, there was a, a guy over him about to shoot him again. And I'm on the radio. I mean, I'm a young trooper. I'm watching it in front of me. I'm, I'm trying to grab everything I can. I don't know what I sounded like on the radio. And I was trying to get the information out. And all I remember is Murtis Dewey. I still remember her name 30-something years ago. And, and she goes, OK, A71. I've got your information. I got some help on the way. And it's such an honor to honor those individuals that are dispatchers. Because as troopers, come on, whether we're on the 6 a.m. or the 6 p.m. shift, you know, we're, we're not there at 5.30, 5.45. We're usually rolling up or go 10-8 from our homes. They can't go 10-8 till they get to the, to the station. So hats off to your dispatcher of the year. What a, and let's give them a round of applause. I thank so much of them. You know, as we, uh, as we march into the future and we honor uh, the best and finest of 2013, you know, we can't and we should never forget our past. As an agency, I believe you became a state highway patrol in, in December of 1929. I believe 43 officers paid the ultimate sacrifice. I believe your first three or four uh, died at uh, riding a motorcycle. Your first one at a gunshot. Uh, it wasn't until like the fifth or sixth one, and you buried two of your finest in 2013, and I bet everyone in this room remembers them. And as we certainly honor your finest, we can't forget um, the path that was paved for us by those that paid that ultimate sacrifice, that, that gave of themselves and uh, left this department uh, who we are today. So certainly to your finest and to those 43 who died in the line of duty, let's, let's certainly not forget them. Um, I've spent some, quite, a, quite a bit of time in, in Tennessee. Uh, as a lot of you know, I had a chance a couple of years ago. We had, we had two prisoners that uh, decided to run off from a minimal security facility we have in Baton Rouge that uh, we oversee at State Police. And um, uh, their mistake was in leaving. The honor and horribleness of the situation is they killed a man that there was no reason to uh, somewhere in Mississippi. And then they headed to uh, Madison County and Jackson, Tennessee, uh, where you would ultimately catch them. And I had the opportunity to spend that. I had a chance to visit with your sheriff, your colonel, your chief, um, and talk about the finest hour of law enforcement when we all come together. You know, I want you to stop and think about it. The public could care less the color of our uniform. They could care less the shape of our badge. They just want to know that when they call us, we're coming, and that we all work together. And I think sometimes... We forget that, and we have that opportunity to, to actually honor uh, those individuals that, that did that. I'm going to tell a couple of stories and, and uh, talk about what I think are core values of, of any organization, certainly something as great as, as your highway patrol uh, and, and your police department, and uh, it's called leadership. I think where it starts off with is that uh, it deals with loyalty. It deals with the badge. It deals with integrity. It deals with 
who you work for and who you represent. It deals with duty. It talks about fulfilling your obligations. Those, those obligations are, are, of course, your faith, your family, and your job. We started the night off with a prayer. I mean, that's where it all begins, that faith inside of us, that ability as an individual to be part of a family. As you leave your home at night, as you work your shift, you get back. Sometimes the, the people most close to us are the ones that we don't communicate enough with, that we don't talk to and let them know exactly what goes on in, in our lives every day. And those core values of dealing with that, of, du of, the, du of the duty and fulfilling your obligations are something that sometimes we, we take for granted and we forget about. That simple communication with a loved one, whether it's a wife or a husband, the mom or dad or a friend, uh, to let them know what's going on in your life and, 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 and taking that time. We, they don't read our minds. They don't understand some of the things we go through. They don't understand we come home, we're quiet. We don't want to talk. Spend those moments letting them know what's going on in your life, what's going on with you, and simply communicate. I think it's important. Uh, the next one is, is respect. It's simply treating people the right way. It's acknowledging at any age. I want you to think about that. I mean, when you're growing up and there's a, somebody that you really admire, you really respect, and, and they take a moment to acknowledge you, what does that mean to you? How important is that? You know, uh, the true worth of a man is what he does for those that can do nothing for him. We have the opportunity as police officers every single day, as state troopers, every single day to do something for someone that can do nothing for us. I did spend 27 years on the sidelines um, uh, with LSU football, saw a lot of great moments, came here to Tennessee a few times, won a few games, and didn't win a few games. But got to see some incredible SEC football. I don't think there's a, a finer um, uh, collegiate football anywhere else on, on earth than, than SEC football. Certainly, y'all have had some great ones here in Tennessee. I've got a chance to see that. But I remember a story that, that really touched me. Um, Tiger Stadium, much similar to, to Vol Stadium and on, on all your stadiums, you know, before the game, the, the kickers are out there kicking and they're warming up and everything like that. And I remember as, as a young troop, I looked over the side and I saw a, an, an older man, tall, frail looking, standing, and a young boy next to him. And uh, they kind of motioned me over here. This is early, uh, long before the game starts, so not a lot of people, just a few people in, in the stadium. And the guy walked to me and he says, Trooper, he said, I just want you to Listen to me for a second. This, this guy next to me, it's my grandfather. He's been to every LSU home football game for the past 60-something years. He was 87 years old. And he said he, he, he's never missed them, but he's never, been, he's never been on the field. He's never been on the sideline. Kind of sick. He's not feeling well. Do you think he could do that? And I'm going, oh, my gosh. Oh, just like I'm sure y'all, that's, that's sacred ground. The university don't want nobody on that field that's not supposed to be there. And I thought for a minute, I said, you know what? What's the right thing to do here? And I said, sure. And I remember seeing that he never, this gentleman never said anything at that, at that point. Put my arm out, he reached over and grabbed my arm, and, and we just kind of walked out in, into, the, into the stadium towards the end zone area. And I looked up at him, and I was watching tears coming out of his eyes. And... And he just gingerly walked. And he was probably remembering plays he saw, things that he, that he got to see in, in Tiger Stadium. And we walked out there. We didn't walk maybe, maybe 12 feet, 10, 12 feet. And he squeezed my arm. So I slowed down and stopped. And he knelt down and he reached down on the ground. He picked up the ground and just kind of did it in his hand and, and just dropped it. And we walked off the field. And he said, Trooper, you, you made an old man's night. He said, thank you so much. A couple of weeks later, I remember uh, getting a, a message, and I returned a phone call, and I recognized the young man's voice on the, on the phone. And he told me, he said, he said, Troop, I just want you to know you, you really did something special a few weeks ago. You know, my grandfather, I told you he was sick. Well, he had cancer, and he died this morning. And he said, before he died, as I was sitting next to him on his bed, he told me what it meant to him to be able to do that. We have that opportunity every single day, whether it's a traffic stop, whether it's at a home, whether it's actually at a school, whether it's someplace where you interact with the public, where you see someone. I was having dinner. Uh, it was actually lunch one day. I was before I became superintendent. I was late to get back to work. I knew my boss was looking for me, and I was getting back, and I saw an older gentleman 
off to one corner that, that caught my eyes, and I saw him smile and look at me like he wanted to say hello, and I was too busy for him, and I took off and got to my car, and I started thinking about it. I said, you know, I can't do that. And I walked back to that restaurant, opened the door, and there was that gentleman standing there, just wanted to say hello. And just like this gentleman in, in Tiger Stadium that night, what it meant for someone that could do nothing for me to take a few minutes to do something special for him. And we're honoring people here tonight that, that actually did that, that took the time out, whether it was a traffic stop, whether it was going to a call, whether it was actually doing something later in the day or doing something that out of the ordinary, where you took a few moments to make a difference in someone's life. That's what respect is about. My grandfather, who I grew up as a little boy in Alexandria, Louisiana, uh, he was a deputy sheriff. Now, he, he died. He, they did a little article on him. He was uh, 91 years old, one of the oldest uh, deputies that was still, still working. He, he retired one day, but he and the sheriff were best friends, so he'd get mad at the sheriff and quick, but guess where he'd be the next day? He, he'd be back at work, wearing his uniform, and I remember he always shined in those shoes. I mean, that was so important to him that his, his shoes looked good, that his uniform was shining. He used to tell me, he said, let me tell you something, Mike. I watch you. Used to, I used to have more hair, so I used to comb my hair all the time and act like I was combing and stuff. And he said, he said, boy, come here one time. He said, let me tell you something. How you look will bring people to you, but how you treat them will keep them there. And I've never forgotten that in my whole career. I used to get up on Saturday mornings. I mean, the last place I wanted to be on a Saturday morning, I could be watching cartoons, I could be playing sports, I could be doing anything, but I would go downtown because back then we'd go with our grandfather and my dad to the post office on a Saturday morning, and I'd walk out there with them, and what, did, what would they make you do? Son, go up to that man, tell him your name, and repeat their name. That was important to them that I did that. Like I said, that's the last place I want to be, but you know what? That's the only place I'd want to be right now, holding my grandfather's hand, talking to my dad, and saying hello to someone as a young boy. It's simply called respect. It's treating people the way they ought to be treated. I, had a, I was speaking at a, a conference in San Diego a couple years ago. It was a four-star general. He had fought in wars all over the the world. He came up to me after I spoke and he said, uh, he said, Trooper, come here, I want to tell you something. He said, I heard you talk, you did well, but let me just tell you something. It's just as hard to raise the human spirit as it is to defend it. I've defended it all over this earth, but you as a police officer get the opportunity every day to raise the human spirit. And heck, we're honoring y'all tonight for that. I will never forget that. Next, we talk about selfless servers. You know, it's, it's never about you. A, a title means nothing. I'm, I'm superintendent of the state police, blessed beyond all my means. Tracy, incredible colonel. We are no better. I'm no better than anyone else in this room. I'm really not. I'm just blessed to have the position I have. And I never forget that. It's not about the title. You know, I sat there as a trooper and said, my gosh, I just can't wait to make sergeant because when I make sergeant, there's no more stress. And wow, if I ever make lieutenant, oh, I'm not going to have to do anything because they don't do anything. And wow, a troop commander, what do they do? 15 minutes and their job's due every morning. It didn't matter where I went. The stress came with me, and I carried it with me. And I think when you talk about selfless service, you've got to think about that. It's never about you. It's also, I, I tell this to my young troopers, and I think this is important throughout life. When you talk about resumes, resume is not what's written on a piece of paper. That means nothing. Resume is how you treat people. Resume is how you get up every morning, how you greet life, how you take that special gift, because God didn't, he didn't have to wake us up. You know, sometimes we wonder how he did, but he did wake us up. And it's how you treat that gift that you get every single morning. And I think that's what selfless service is all about. You know, we find out pretty quickly in life that you can't change human nature. But as police officers, as first responders, as emergency technicians, we can affect human action. 
And I think that when we talk about selfless service, we've, we've got to remember that. I remember as a, as a young trooper, I, I was a, um, the spokesperson at that particular time, and I was getting to go to, to a school, and I was in my uh, new car that I kept clean, and, and uh, I was bringing the helicopter. I was going to this, this, this first and second and third grade class, and I said, wow, I'm going to be everything this day. I'm a, I'm a state trooper. I, man, I'm, I'm all shiny and everything like that, and I'm bringing the helicopter. These kids are going to think this is the greatest thing in the world. Well, guess what happened about, a thir about 30 minutes into my show? Guess who showed up? A fire truck. <laughs> I don't even think they remember the helicopter taking off. They were ringing that bell on that fire truck. Title means nothing. It's what you do with what you have. The two that are so incredibly important to me is honor and integrity. And I think um, it, really, it really talks about what we really only have. And that's our honor and that's our integrity. It is about, it is about how you treat people. And it is the true value of a person because it's what's inside of you that's so very much important. To me, integrity is doing what's right all the time. But guess what? It's doing what's right when no one's looking because that's who you really are. I want you to stop and think about that. When no one's looking, how you act, what you say to yourself, what you think about is really who you are. And that's what it deals with when we're talking about honor and integrity. And lastly, it's about personal courage. You know, in work and personal life, it's not, again, who you are, but it's, it's what you are. It's what you bring to bear every single day. We had a horrible crash about a year and a half ago outside of Baton Rouge where two families were traveling from New Orleans to Baton Rouge, 11 all together. Uh, seven people died that day. Van ran off the road. The first person there was an EMT technician that was going to work. What did he have on him? He had a little bag with some Band-Aids in it and some tape and stuff like that. His job for 16 minutes was to keep those other four people alive and attend to those seven that were killed, families, babies, everything. 16 minutes before anyone arrived, and all he had was what he taught, what he was taught, and what he had in a little bag. I want you to think about that as a, as a lone state trooper. You know, you head to the scene of a fatality, carnage everywhere. The city police is waiting for you. The sheriff's waiting for you. You get out there, and it's, it's just you. Families are sitting there waiting. It's just, it's just a horrible situation. And what happens when you drive up? It's a calming effect because they know that you're going to do the job. They know you're going to take care of business. You're going to make everything right. That's the expectation of you. That's what the public thinks of you. That's a pretty honorable thing to be part of. You know, as I, as I finish tonight, because I'm not going to talk for an hour and a half, but uh, I want to tell you something that means more to me than anything else, and it deals with integrity, and it's this badge that we all wear. You see, to me, the most precious thing on your uniform is this badge. Somebody special pinned it on, and it represents who and what you are. You don't have a right to it. I don't have a right to it. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. It was granted to you to wear, to work one of the best organizations that there is on earth, and the integrity that comes with wearing that badge. Never forget that, because it is indeed the most precious thing that you have on. I had a chance to, when I was here in, in Jackson, Madison County and Jackson, I had a chance to say I'm witnessing um, Tennessee's finest hour in law enforcement. And as I sit out here and look at y'all here tonight and think about what we're honoring here tonight, the things that y'all have done, this is about, art. we're all ordinary individuals. But guess what? You had the opportunity to do something extraordinary. And that's why we honor you here tonight. That's why that badge on your uniform is so precious. That's why you understand, as a state trooper, the importance and the privilege of wearing that, bag, that badge. 
I salute y'all here tonight. I salute your superintendents, your commissioners, your friends, our partners, to tell you that I am witnessing once again here tonight Tennessee's finest hour. Congratulations, every single one of y'all. Thank y'all very much. Well, thank you. Oh, look. <laughs> How about that? You just had to do it, didn't you? It is. That was, that was good. I was really impressed by Colonel Edmondson, by the way. And I think, Commissioner, that you need to assign our colonel some more roles and responsibilities. I mean, security, LSU football, really? And, and I like the, the oil committee, lieutenant of the oil committee. Wow. I mean, who knew? In Louisiana, of course, yes, obviously we have oil. But I'm, I'm thinking you need some more roles and responsibilities. Yes, we'll get on that. Well, we're here this evening, obviously, to honor our dispatchers and Trooper of the Year. And it's really an exciting night for all of us here in this room. So we're going to go ahead and get this started. I'm very excited and honored to be here with you this evening. We are first going to start with our Dispatcher of the Year. Once I call your name, please come up, receive your award, and come over here to get your picture, of course, taken with our officials. Starting off, these two individuals displayed exceptional communication with one another and their coordinated efforts with THP field units, as well as several other law enforcement agencies which resulted in two arrests of two individuals wanted in Georgia for carjacking and homicide. The Knoxville District Dispatchers of the Year are Communications Operators Crystal Millsaps and Andrew Lawson. What a gentleman, Crystal. Did you see that? Yes. <laughs> We're gonna move along as they get their awards and their photograph taken. This individual is a communications training officer who has become an asset in training new dispatchers. He uses actual on-the-job scenarios as training tools to make sure new dispatchers understand the seriousness and professionalism of the job. The Chattanooga, excuse me, goodness, I'm distracted. <laughs> no pun intended, distracted driving, oh, all our good things. The Chattanooga, Chattanooga District Dispatcher of the Year is Communications Operator Kenneth Scott Usselton. <laughs> Congratulations. This dispatcher executed excellent work assisting the Illinois State Police in tracking a stolen vehicle taking during the commission of a homicide. She disseminated the information to THP units and other agencies along the route determined by Illinois pinging the location of the driver's cell phone, felt pinging it actually. With her assistance, Trooper Vincent Tarosi located and took the subject into custody. The Nashville District Dispatcher of the Year is Communications Operator, Amanda Shivers. Congratulations. This dispatcher is not being honored for one particular incident during the last year, but for his three decades of dedicated service to the Highway Patrol. He has exhibited that he understands well the vitality of a trooper's job and works diligently to ascertain and disseminate necessary information quickly. The troopers in his district are very appreciative of this. The Memphis District Dispatcher of the Year is Communications Operator Bill Dunn.
This dispatcher's professionalism was demonstrated when a pursuit ended in a crash and the subject began firing at the trooper. Within 10 minutes of the shots, fired, fired transmission, units from four agencies arrived. While waiting on help, she continued to communicate with the trooper and other agencies, remaining calm and professional throughout this stressful incident. Her confident demeanor was definitely a catalyst that ultimately led to a successful conclusion to these events. The Fall Branch District Dispatcher of the Year is Communications Operator Anne Marie Green. After receiving a call from a veteran who was in obvious mental distress and indicating suicidal tendencies, she managed to gain his trust and determine his location. Officers from the local police department were sent to his aid, preventing the man from harming himself or others. The Cookville District Dispatcher of the Year is Communications Operator Felicia Hoover. This individual is communications training officer committed to achieving excellence on both a personal and district-wide level by ensuring calls are entered correctly and any errors are corrected in a timely fashion. His work ethic is the eptim of what a THP dispatcher should be. The Lawrenceburg Dispatcher of the Year is communications operator Kevin Payne. Congratulations. This dispatcher has been a loyal and dedicated employee of the department for the past 19 years. She is one of two certified basic telecommuter instructors for the department and teaches this class to all new hires in communications. The Jackson District Dispatcher of the Year is Communications Operator Tracy Lockard. We're going to move on now to Trooper of the Year. When I call your name, please come up, accept your award, and also uh, get your photograph taken here with the officials. Starting off in the Knoxville District, this award recipient had one of the highest enforcement activities in the Knoxville District, including 2,904 total citations. 292 commercial vehicle inspections and investigated 156 crashes. The Knoxville District Dis Trooper of the Year is Trooper Jerry Watson. In 2013, he made 170 DUI arrests, which is more than any other trooper in the state. The Ch Chattanooga District Trooper of the Year is Trooper Stoney Morton. You need to tell us a little more about yourself. I didn't have a lot to read there. <laughs> Do a little Q&A. He's a big guy. <laughs> big, guy. big guy, LSU football player maybe? I don't know. 
Due to his well-rounded enforcement activities for 2013, which include 82 DUI arrests, 502 seatbelt and CRD citations, and 129 commercial vehicle inspections, he also made a very significant arrest of a homicide suspect. The Nashville District Trooper of the Year is Trooper Vincent Tarosi. We know this guy. <laughs> this trooper exhibited exceptional commercial vehicle enforcement efforts. She inspected 1,472 commercial vehicles, which yielded a driver out of service rate of 4.6% and vehicle out of service rate of 17.6%. The Memphis District Trooper of the Year is Trooper Darlene Smith. Oh, I love it. She's clapping for herself. That's what you should be doing. Clapping for yourself. Congratulations. This trooper has shown outstanding enforcement efforts. His commercial vehicle out of service rate was 63% and his driver out of service rate was 35%. He made 106 DUI arrests which was more than any other trooper in the Fall Branch District. <laughs> Overall, statewide. <laughs> well, Vince, the Fall Branch Trooper of the Year is Trooper Vince Mullins. <laughs> You owe me, Vince, you owe me. <laughs> in 2013, he led the district in DUI enforcement, having made 51 arrests. He has a total of 58 arrests, which included 10 felony drug arrests. The Cookville District Trooper of the Year is Trooper Al Seitner. This trooper has demonstrated impressive enforcement activities, which included citations for 603 moving violations, 693 non-moving violations, and 202 seatbelt violations. He was fifth overall in the state in DUI enforcement with 81 arrests. The Lawrenceburg District Trooper of the Year is Trooper Michael Kilpatrick. This trooper issued 1,031 citations, conducted 62 commercial motor vehicle inspections, assisted 170 motorists, and made 102 total arrests last year. His 77 DUI arrest was more than any other Jackson District trooper and sixth overall statewide. The Jackson District Trooper of the Year is Trooper Michael Sullivan.
This individual exhibited excellent work in developing a tracking and accountability program for weapons and equipment provided to the THP by the Defense Logistics Agency Law Enforcement Support Office. He spent many nights and weekends completing the project while continuing to direct daily operations and assignments for special operations covering his lieutenant's duties due to extended medical leave. The Defense Logistics Agency adopted his inventory presentation as a model for other agencies to use in the future. From the Special Operations Division, the Administrative Trooper of the Year is Sergeant Ossie Thaxter. You're wanting to smile. <laughs> this trooper was the lead investigator in a trooper shooting case in which led to the arrest of a subject for attempted murder of a state trooper and multiple firearms violations. He also led the investigation in the recovery of a stolen semi-trailer containing a shipment of cigarettes with a retail value of $3 million and recovered eight other stolen vehicles. From the Special Investigations Bureau, the Investigator of the Year is Sergeant Rocky D. Rocky Johnson. I was told I had to do Rocky, I had to do Jessica told me I had to do that. <laughs> this trooper has made 14 significant traffic stops last year that resulted in major felony charges against multiple defendants and led the Interdiction Plus East Bureau in federally prosecuted cases. Most of his cases are made from cold traffic stops without any knowledge of illegal activity from outside sources. From the Chattanooga District Interdiction Plus Team, the Interdiction Trooper of the Year is Trooper George Junior Stevens. <laughs> I was told again, I had to do it, I had to do it. <laughs> Congratulations. Getting impaired drivers off of Tennessee roadways has and will always be a primary objective of this administration, but it is not the only factor contributing to fatalities and injury accidents. Hazardous moving violations and seatbelt usage also play major roles in our mission. Tennessee state troopers have embraced these enforcement efforts and committed themselves to taking action and saving lives. In addition to recognizing the top troopers in DUI enforcement, this year we will also recognize those who excelled in seatbelt and hazardous moving violation enforcement. With 952 citations for hazardous moving violations, this Knoxville District Trooper ranked fifth overall statewide. Join me in congratulating Trooper Carl Durier. Ranked fourth overall statewide, this Lawrenceburg District Trooper issued 972 hazardous moving violation citations. Please help me congratulate Trooper Ronnie Wright.
with 1,007 citations for hazardous moving violations, this Fall Branch District trooper ranked third overall statewide. Here he comes. Join me in congratulating Trooper David Osborne. <laughs> I like it when you get really excited and you're just ready to come up. I like it. <laughs> just keep it going. Ranked second overall statewide, this Knoxville District Trooper issued 1,145 hazardous moving violation citations. Please congratulate Trooper Jerry Watson. The trooper who issued the most citations for hazardous moving violations in 2013 is from the Memphis District. He's a veteran with over 10 years of service who has consistently had one of the highest activities in this area throughout his career. With 1,428 citations, please join me in congratulating Trooper Billy Wayne Jackson. He sat at my table. I have to tell you this funny little story real quickly. And Kendall's going, oh my goodness. But I am notoriously looking out for teenagers wearing their seatbelts. So whenever I stop and I'm getting gas or I'm somewhere and I see a kid who doesn't have their seatbelt on, Mama Megan is going to go over and make sure that I politely remind him to, or she, he or she, to put on their seatbelt. So last night I was pulling up to get my oldest son at basketball. And I'm pulling in this church parking lot, and there's a, a small sedan parked right beside me. It has five boys in the car. And I look over, and every one of them has their seatbelt buckled. And I thought, oh, my gosh. It was just amazing to see this. So I had to get out of the car and commend them. I had to go over and applaud them. And so I knock on the passenger side window, and there's a teenage boy sitting there, and he's dipping. Okay. <laughs> And he goes like this. I'm going, roll down your window. And he goes, and he rolls down, the, pat, the driver rolls down the window. And I said, boys, I have to applaud you. You are all wearing your seatbelts. And the boy in the back goes, yes, like this. And I'm like, yes, I'm so happy for you all. This is such a great feeling to see you all doing this. Way to go. And the other boy's sitting here like this. And I said, and by the way, I know you're dipping. But it's okay, because I'm just here to let you know I'm just happy you all have your seatbelts on. So you just go right ahead and dip. <laughs> that's my, that's my seatbelt story. That's my segue into our, our seatbelt usage. Whether it's day or night, we know that seatbelts save lives. The members of the Tennessee Highway Patrol have paid special attention to this important area, and the number of unrestrained fatalities has decreased. The top troopers in the area of seatbelt enforcement were identified by combining the total number of seatbelt and child restraint device citations written during 2013. They are the definition of click it or ticket. The trooper ranked 10th overall in seatbelt enforcement is from the Nashville district with 502 citations. Please congratulate once again Trooper Vincent Tarosi. This guy's got it going on. <laughs> the trooper in the ninth position in this category is from the Knoxville District. With 511 citations, please congratulate Trooper Carl Durie. Another one. The
The trooper in the eighth position is from the Fall Branch District with 531 citations. Please congratulate Trooper James Nipper. The trooper in the seventh, seventh position is from the Jackson District. With 706 citations, please congratulate Trooper Clint Todd. The trooper in the sixth position is from the Knoxville District. With 786 citations, please congratulate Trooper Stephen Barkley. <laughs> the next four troopers are all from the Nashville District. They spent many days as a motorcycle unit working all counties in the district and wrote over 4,000 seatbelt citations collectively. The trooper in the fifth position had 941 citations. Please help me congratulate Trooper Joe A.G. The trooper in the fourth position had 1,008 citations. Please help me congratulate Trooper William Bennett. <laughs> the trooper in the third position had 1,083 citations. Please congratulate Trooper William Buddy Head. We got another Buddy. We know this next trooper in our office pretty well. The trooper in the second position had 1,008 citations. Please help me congratulate Trooper Billy Smith. The trooper who issued the most seatbelt citations in 2013 is from the Knoxville District. He has over 26 years of service to the THP. With 1,394 citations, please join me in congratulating Trooper Jerry Watson. Moving right along. The attention to identifying and arresting impaired drivers has led to a significant reduction in alcohol and drug-related crashes in Tennessee. The troopers we are about to recognize have played an integral role in that effort. They accounted for 15% of the total DUI arrests made by the THP last year. The trooper ranked 10th overall statewide in DUI enforcement is from the Nashville District. With 64 DUI arrests, please congratulate Sergeant Adam Grinder. We know Adam. <laughs> Thank you. 
He's a little short, isn't he? <laughs> the trooper in the ninth position in this category is from the Knoxville district with 65 DUI arrests. Please help me congratulate Trooper Carl Duryea. Did you know that? Well, you won. <laughs> and I'm just happy that I've been able to pronounce your name all three times. Well, it's a surprise that you didn't win, but you're listed. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Do we have a Knoxville yes. district? Okay. The trooper that won in the Knoxville district is Jason Kirk. I bet that was a surprise to you. <laughs> We're full of surprises up here. It's just a little fun thing we do. <laughs> the trooper in the eighth position is from the Nashville district with 67 arrests Please congratulate Trooper Michael Marvin. <laughs> the trooper in the seventh position is from the Chattanooga, Chattanooga District with 76 arrests. Please congratulate Trooper Jason Bowles. That's a proud wife. I like it. You go, girl. <laughs> the trooper in the sixth position is also from the Chattanooga District. With 77 DUI arrests, please help me congratulate Trooper Michael Sullivan. The trooper in the fifth position is from the Lawrenceburg District with 81 arrests. Please help me congratulate Trooper Michael Kilpatrick. He's back. The trooper in the fourth position is from the Nashville District with 82 arrests. Please... <laughs> Help me congratulate <laughs> Trooper Vincent Tarosi. Look at him, he's laughing, he knows. <laughs> Man, you own this room. <laughs> the trooper in the third position is from the Fall Branch District. With 106 arrests, please congratulate Trooper Vince Mullins. <laughs> the trooper in second position is from the Chattanooga District. With 119 DUI arrests, please help me congratulate Trooper Tommy Lyles. The trooper with the most DUI arrests in 2013 is a recent graduate of the Tennessee Highway Patrol Academy. Last year was his first full year working the road. With 170 arrests, please join me in congratulating Trooper Stoney Morton.
We've got some special presentations tonight. And what I'll have the uh, Lifesavers Awards first. They'll come up right in front. We'll present their awards and have a picture with Commissioner Gibbons and Commissioner Godwin and uh, Colonel Edmondson. This year, we recognize a new category, but no less important than any other, the Lifesavers Award. We are honoring five individuals that we felt were responsible for actually saving a human life. We had 10 nominations from our captains and only approved five award winners. This is a very prestigious award that will be signified with a Lifesaver medallion and a Lifesaver ribbon to be worn on their uniform. These people represent the best examples of duty in the face of danger and extreme pressure. The first Lifesaver Award winner is a 13-year trooper who finished his shift at the Knoxville Scales and was traveling home when he noticed heavy smoke coming from the back of a house. He advised dispatch of his location, the situation, and then needed a fire truck to his location. He then ran to the front door and used his flashlight to bang on the door and no one answered. The fire was spreading, so he kicked in the front door and identified himself. An elderly man called for help from within the structure. The trooper proceeded to get the elderly man out of the house and saved his life. It's my honor to give the Lifesaver Award to Trooper John Pettigo of Knoxville. The next recipient of the Lifesaver Award is from the Nashville District. This trooper was having lunch and was alerted that a patron at the restaurant was choking and without hesitation took immediate action. He performed the Heimlich Maneuver successfully and saved the man's life. He did not request any type of fanfare and quietly went back to his table to finish his meal. The patron just got up and said thank you and left the restaurant. Even though the man's name is not known, I would venture to say that he speaks very highly of the Tennessee Highway Patrol for the rest of his life. The Lifesaver Award goes to Trooper Donald Binkley. The next two awards go to troopers who were dispatched to a three-vehicle crash on I-40 involving a tractor trailer, an SUV, and a church bus. This crash was the second deadliest crash on record in the Fall Branch District, with eight lives lost in a matter of moments. If it had not been for the heroes that worked together for a common goal of preservation of the victims' lives, it would have been even more devastating. It's best described as a war zone with bodies strewn all about the crash area. Two troopers arrived at the crash scene four minutes after the dispatch call and found an overturned church bus and a tractor trailer in flames just to the rear of the bus. The senior trooper of the scene took charge, calling for additional resources, directing arriving troopers as well as members of the public and how to best assist the injured. There were four deceased persons who had been ejected into the median, and few others were, needed, were in need of immediate medical attention. Both troopers could see that the flames from the tractor trailer were becoming more intense and were quickly spreading to the bus. They used fire extinguishers to slow the flames, but as the fire continued to spread, they had to enter the bus, along with members of the fire and rescue squad, in an attempt to bring passengers to safety. Together, they began bringing out injured victims. 
When the jaws of life was used to remove the seats, the two troopers began carrying the seats and more injured and deceased victims from the bus, all while it was on fire. When this was complete, they continued to assist with first aid until the last of the injured was transported from the scene. Undoubtedly, the action of these two troopers saved other injured victims and prevented more loss of life. Their actions were exemplary and heroic. The Lifesaver Awards go to Trooper Eric Raines and Trooper Bradley Robbins of Fall Branch. The last Lifesaver Award also goes to a trooper that arrived at the same tragic crash scene and immediately began providing life-saving attention to the victim with a collapsed lung. The trooper, who is a certified EMT paramedic, used a needle to alleviate the collapsed lung at the scene of the crash prior to transport of the subject. He, along with members of EMS, set up a triage area to evaluate and identify victims needing emergency transport by helicopter based on their injuries and immediate need of treatment. The care and medical attention that this trooper provided at such a chaotic scene undoubtedly saved lives at the scene of one of the worst crashes in Fall Branch history. The Lifesaver Award goes to Trooper Jeff Coffey. We are recognizing a lot of great work tonight with dispatchers and state troopers, but I want to take an opportunity to recognize a few people that have made great contributions to the success we've experienced and enhanced our organization. If you don't know, we have a certain way we decide the Trooper and Dispatcher of the Year awards. It's a majority vote of the command staff, considering the nominations based from the captains. Most of the time, I seem to be on the losing end of those votes. So I decided I'd have my own awards. <laughs> and I could not be outvoted. And these are these awards to pr proceed with. When I assumed the Colonel's position in 2010, one of the first things that Commissioner Gibbons and I had to tackle was phase one of a new radio system and more funding for phase two. Without a communications background, I was a little concerned and overwhelmed. I think Commissioner Gibbons, as a new commissioner, felt the same pressure that I did to develop a plan and execute what has turned into, with construction and maintenance, a $175 million project. We had to find people within our organization and bring in a new person to oversee this project. This was one of our most important decisions and would decide our operational capability for decades to come. Luckily, we found the right people, and they have helped us complete all the contracts for construction and maintenance. We have finished implementing phase one and starting construction on phase two to com be completed next year. I know the commissioner is sharing my thanks to these two guys who have really done a great job. The Colonel's Achievement Awards go to Captain Tim Dover of Support Services and Communications Director Arnold Hooper.
One of the priorities for Commissioner Gibbons when he came into office was to be more effective with one of our statutory duties, identity theft. No one in law enforcement field was doing a good job with this crime and the, and the problem continues to grow every day. We established an investigative unit within the department with members from driver services, from Homeland Security, and the THP in hopes to connecting all the dots for local law enforcement to be a source of information for the public in their time of need. We needed the right person to lead this effort. The man we picked has done a great job ensuring that we had the proper training for our team, the proper pro protocols to guide their operation, and investigation of certain cases brought to us by law enforcement and government entities. The unit has opened up over 600 cases in the first two years of operation, and the value of the Identities Crime Unit was highlighted last December when they investigated a Memphis check cashing scheme on a State Department of Corrections account involving the loss of tens of thousands of state dollars. Within hours, the suspects were identified and an undercover operation planned. Three days later, arrests were made, including the leader who was the most wanted criminal in Shelby County, who was wanted for aggravated kidnapping, aggravated robbery, and aggravated assault to go along with this massive fraud where he supplied over 40 checks from the state of Tennessee routing and account numbers. The Colonel's Achievement Award goes to Captain Stacy Williams of the Identity Crimes Unit. We have a little business unit in the Highway Patrol called the Tennessee Integrated Traffic Analysis Network, otherwise known as Titan. This has grown from an IT project in 2008 to maybe the most important business unit in our department. Data-driven employment and predictive analytics is now the way we do business, and we will improve on that in the future. Not only is Titan the depository for every crash report in Tennessee, it has become our central records management tool for the THP. As we begin predictive analytics and a new approach to reducing crashes and increasing efficiency and enforcement, we depend on Titan and the great services it gives to our troopers and every police officer in Tennessee. I want to recognize the leader of the Titan group who has guided the operation from its inception and provides valuable counsel to the commissioners and leaders of the THP to successfully fill, fulfill our mission. The Colonel's Achievement Award goes to Chris Osborne. Every successful leader has a person or people who support that effort and serve in the background to make things happen. There becomes a trust and a closeness that really can't be explained. At times, I feel like she knows what I'm thinking before I do. She not only manages my time and efforts, but provides original ideas that we turn into actions. I've trusted her with some of my most valued ideas and events, like the Southern Colonels Conference, the State Police Planning Conference, promotion ceremonies, and all three Trooper and Dispatcher of the Year banquets. Trust me, none of you will be here tonight with a great meal, fantastic awards, and an honored event with a hotel room if she didn't see to it. The Colonel's Achievement Award goes to my fantastic executive assistant, Jessica Craddock.
Now it's time to award the District of the Year. This is a coveted award that spurs competition between captains and districts to perform better and accomplish more. This year's winner will take home the flag representing the District of the Year and display it until this time next year. I think it's standing right over to my left. The District of the Year had a great year in safety, education, and enforcement. The district reduced crashes from 4 to 17% in all categories, reduced fatalities by a whopping 24%, DUI arrests by troopers increased 24%, and safety belt enforcement went up 15%. The Special Programs Division was recognized by national media outlets for the use of a tractor trailer to enforce distracting driving statutes. I want to thank the troopers of this district for their dedication to duty and making Tennessee a safer place. The District of the Year is Chattanooga. And the Colonel's Achievement Award goes to Captain Jesse Brooks. Now for the Statewide Dispatcher of the Year. <laughs> By a vote of the command staff, it's my honor to recognize the Dispatcher of the Year. This award winner receives a trophy and a necklace or pin from Jostens, signifying this recognition. The Dispatcher of the Year is recognized for her outstanding and professional performance of her duties on the night a trooper was fired upon. Her work led to successful conclusion to what could have been a tragedy and the difference between life and death for Trooper Appleby. The 2013 Dispatcher of the Year is Anna Green from Fall Branch. Now for the statewide Trooper of the Year. I'd like to call up last year's winner, Trooper Nathan Hall from Kingsport. <laughs> By a vote of the command staff, it's my honor to recognize the 2013 Trooper of the Year. The award winner receives a trophy and a coveted Trooper of the Year ring from Jostin, signifying the honor. This award has really been several years in the making. His enforcement activity has been outstanding over the last few years, winning the number one DUI enforcement award last year with over 200 arrests. He followed that up this year with a fourth place finish in DUI enforcement with a 92% conviction rate, a 10th place finish in seatbelt enforcement with over 500 citations. He completed 129 commercial vehicle inspections and had a very significant arrest of a homicide suspect out of Illinois. All this was accomplished while spending significant time off patrol in training and in court. The 2013 Trooper of the Year 
is Vincent Trosi of Nashville. Well, folks, that's it. <laughs> this concludes our evening's festivities and ceremony. What a great evening we had. Congratulations to all of our award winners. Let's give everybody another round of applause.